Basel was a leading great man, and the memories of great men live on. You now invite Uncle Basel's youngest brother, Mr. John Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, emotionally I stand here to speak, but I don't speak long because my heart is sad. To see that my brother is lying here, lifeless, but I'm so happy to see that he has friends that still remember him especially during his lifetime. He was awarded and recommended as a great gentleman. One of us belongs to Morocco. I am the twelfth, I am the eleventh of the twelfth children that my mother bear. And right now, just two of us remain out of the twelfth of us. My elder sister who lives in the States, and I alone Presently, I'm living in the region 7, a place called Kaika. But because of my ill health, I was encouraged to come down by my daughter to seek medical attention. And that is how the Lord had worked it, that I'm still here. And during my presence here now, I got a sad news that my brother had died. It hurts my dear friend. But what was they see? It is a journey that each and every one of us has to take in this life. There is no exception. So, Brother Basil, who had suffered for many years, I went to see him two years ago. And his condition was not so serious. We discussed, we chatted, we remember our young days. And I left again with the hope of returning back to Morocco to see him. But unfortunately, circumstances could not permit me to come before. But fortunately, I'm here now to witness the burial in the bed of my brother who lies in state. My friends, I'm so happy that I had this opportunity to say a few words. There are many more things I would like to say, but time doesn't permit me. And as I said before, emotionally and sad at this moment, it hurts. So thanks for all you good people who have made it possible to be here to witness this great man who died. I never had the opportunity to speak to him concerning his, his life that he spent. He lived in most of his young days he spent in Rubaloni. I think it is 40 years he spent there. And most of the time he devoted it to the welfare of the people of that area. And he returned back to his native land, his native workplace, to complete what he had aspired to achieve in life. So my dear friends, this man that lies here now is a great friend of many of you people who are here. And I hope and I expect that this friendship will not sever or diminish, but that it will grow continually as the days go by. My two daughters are here. I don't know if they have anything to say, but I am sad as well as I'm happy that you people are here. May the Lord be with him and may he rest in peace until one day when Jesus comes. We hope to be together in heaven. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. We know that Uncle Basil was an ardent member of the church. Some of you might recall his efforts to raise money. 
funds to repair the Santa Rosa Roman Catholic Church a few years ago. I'm integrally involved in organizing parish fairs, among other things. And so at this time, we invite Monsignor Terence Montrose to reflect on Uncle Basil's life and his contribution to the church. When I was a young seminarian, we were taken to all parts of the country. Rubenig was one of those. And we heard the name Teacher Basil. When we went to the village of Shia, we were enthralled by the place and by the children. Only the other day I was cleaning the crypt down there on the cathedral and I found pictures of these young children as they work during school time. I thought all the time that Uncle Basil was from the village itself. It was not until quite recently I realized that he was from Maruka. I wonder how he got to Shia from Maruka. I recently learned that one sister, Teresa Fernandez of the Sister of Mercy, recruited them, some young men, between 1945 and 1948, to go to the Rokununi as teachers. And there has been a steady stream of young people from Maruka going to the Rukununi and to the Pakaraibas as teachers. Those villages did not see the priest very often. Many of them have churches now. But in those days, they had a visit every now and again from their priest. And so the head teachers and teachers were given the responsibility of training the children in the ways of the faith. I heard recently too that it was the custom every day from 1 o'clock to 1.30 to instruct the children in the faith. Each school, each teacher had to do that. And they did it with a will passing on their own faith to the children. The head teacher was the leader in the village. And before the coming of PLAs, they played that role. They took them the names of all the babies to be baptized, the names of all of those who were to be married, and the names of those who were to be confirmed. And they had them ready for when the priest comes, they handed them to the priest, the priest had a discussion with them, and then it was clear. The head teacher also gathered the people from Sunday to Sunday when the priest is not there, and held services with them. Basil, it seems, did a very good job in calling his community and leading them in prayer. And priest after priest was impressed with his work. So somewhere around 2000, the Pope himself sent him a letter of commendation and a medal of service, if you will. He sent him the Beni Morenti for hard and dedicated Christian service to his brothers and sisters. He returned to his village and he continued to be an inspiration and a leader to both the young and the old. He will return to his village just now and he will come become part of the fabric of that village 
reminding his brothers and sisters what life is all about and perhaps inspiring them to do the work they must so that Maruka will be a great and safe place.